If you've been in the reptile hobby for a minute, you might notice that things change decade to decade. So what about the 1980s? What were the top five 1980s reptiles you don't see anymore? Today, we're gonna cover it. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Spicket Reptiles, stick around. I love this video series and I hope you do too. Now the 1980s was the decade before I was born, so I wasn't here. So I had to go and talk to some friends who are a little bit older than me and discuss things that you used to see, read articles and things like that, even find lists of stores from the 80s. So let's just get right into it. Number five, milk snakes. Now, milk snakes are still popular, don't get me wrong, but they're not as popular as they were then in comparison to other colubrids and other snakes. Everything that I read about the 1980s, people who had pet stores in the 80s, people who were importers in the 80s, they always talked about the local stuff, especially in the US and Canada, milk snakes. So we're talking about Eastern milk snakes used to be a staple, which is crazy because here in Ontario, we can't even own them because they are native. I've never seen one in a private collection personally. Things like Pueblins or Hondurans, even black milk steaks back in the day. So this isn't to say that, well, where do they go? They're still around. It's just that there wasn't really morphs back then or as many. And these snakes were like five or 10 bucks a lot of the time. And as we go back in the decades, you'll notice something very similar amongst the older decades. Not a lot of captive breeding. A lot of these animals are native. And I'm basing this on US and Canadian markets because that's where I am. I'm in Canada. I know the US and Canadian market. And it seems like milk snakes, especially the ones that maybe didn't have to travel that far in order for you to come by or find or get, those are the ones that you see quite often in the 80s in these articles, which I got to read and on the lists as well. And it makes sense. Milk snakes are freaking amazing. They're amazing animals. I love milk snakes. Now this is a pretty common one, but let's move on to something that you really don't see in pet stores anymore and for good reason. And that's number four, basilisks. I am so happy that you don't just see basilisks all willy nilly all over the place anymore. A $45 animal that's gonna t cost maybe $500 to $1,000 to set up properly because basilisks are freaking huge. These are big animals. These are not a joke. They're not a toy. Sure, they're called Jesus lizards and they run on their hind legs and they're beautiful and they look like dragons. Look at this one that we found in Costa Rica, a giant male, maybe one of the most beautiful, stunning animals that I've ever seen. It looked majestic. It looked like it wasn't of this world, so I get why you'd want them. But they're freaking huge, and they're semi-arboreal, and they're semi-aquatic, so imagine a much cheaper version of a sailfin dragon. People don't take it seriously because they're so cheap to buy, and that's the issue, and that's what you see a lot of, I think, in the 80s, 90s, and even earlier than that, is people didn't know what they were doing. Maybe it's not even their fault. Maybe it's because one book came out in 1969 and that's all that there was about basilisks, where now we have the internet. I can go on a forum today on Facebook or Reddit or whatever and just say, hey, you know, you wanna shoot the breeze about basilisks and learn a whole bunch. That wasn't an option in the 80s. So whether it's their fault or not, the point is these animals are just not beginner reptiles. There's no reason that they should be sold for $45 or less. And in the 80s, I saw them for five and $10 on forums. I was talking to somebody who said that they would see them in pet stores for maybe 15 bucks or less. Sure, in the 80s, 15 bucks is probably equivalent to 50 or something now, but still, I mean, that's too little money for an animal was such a commitment. And in the 80s, this is the same time when alligators and crocodiles were in pet stores too, or at Walgreens, you could go buy them. So yeah, what, do, what does that tell you? Number three, sliders. Red ear sliders and yellow belly sliders. Sure, we see these all the time still, but at least up here in Canada, you never see them in pet stores because they're an invasive species there's a lot of laws about selling these animals for profit and a lot of places you can't even do that. And they're just such a dime a dozen where back in the day, you could win them at fairs, carnivals, uh, garage sales, school festivals, things like that. I've heard of people taking these things home as prizes from school festivals, from play day and grade six in the eighties. That's freaking wild. These animals need a hundred plus gallons of water for one turtle to be healthy. So no, this is not a great, pet at all. A redder slider or a yellow belly slider, however you want to put it, I have yellow belly, but I have it in a 150 gallon tank. 
and it gets, you know, the water gets changed all the time and it has a, the most expensive pump that we could buy, the filter filtration system, and it's got a basket, like it's set up properly because I have time and I know what I'm doing because I get to talk to people who take care of these things and not just in a book that I read 10 years ago. So things are much different than they were back then. Where I would see pictures, even as recently as the 2000s, like when I was in school, and you'd see people have them in like a 10 gallon and it's all green because the water is terrible and they produce so much waste. And a 10 gallon is ridiculous, by the way. No basking platform, like it's just crazy. So imagine the 80s. And I actually saw a magazine picture of someone setting one up in a 20 gallon. This is perfect. And I had like a little log and probably no UVB. Yeah, I'm glad those days are done. Number two, gopher snakes. Now gopher snakes, the Pichuophis family, not just bull snakes, but other gopher snakes too. Although bull snakes are probably the most common gopher snakes. And if you didn't know that they were gopher snakes, now you know. Gopher snakes are pretty big in terms of colubrids. They're big around, they're long. The bull snake, I believe, is the second longest snake in all of North America, right after the Eastern Indigo snake. But they're similar animals, kind of. They're big, thick colubrids. Some bull snakes can get as big around as a grown man's wrist, like a grown man, not me, a grown man's wrist. They're pretty thick. They're hissy, they're huffy, they're puffy, and they're not really the greatest for a lot of people if you're not looking for something so big, such a big commitment. But with that said, they're not ridiculous. They're not difficult to care for if you really know what you're doing and you wanna take care of something like that. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad pet. I just think that they're bad for some people. And also they're just not as common now because people know about better options or easier options, just kind of more realistic options. Things like milk snakes, which is hilarious because you don't see them as much, or corn snakes or ball pythons or, or whatever. And also because back in the day, ball pythons, there wasn't a ton of captive breeding in the early 80s going on, not like there is now anyway. It was much easier to get your hands on a bull snake. So if you wanted something bigger than a corn snake or bigger than a milk snake, you got yourself a bull snake or a Sonoran gopher snake or whatever, right? A bunch of different types of gopher snakes. And they're North American species, so you can get them in your backyard, depending on where you live. And it was easier to transport things over state lines back then. We didn't have all these ridiculous proposed laws that make no sense whatsoever. So it, it was just easier to get them back then, especially in comparison to things that might have been imports. And they were cheap. You could buy bull snakes for, you know, five or 10 bucks back in the day. And these are hardy animals. They're, you know, difficult to, kill and make sick. Like, let's be honest here with what it is. So they're easy to take care of. And because we didn't know how to care for things like we do now, it was just easy to throw it into a shoebox or a plywood container or whatever with a little bit of heat because they don't need a crazy basking spot. Yes, they need a higher temperature than room temperature for sure. And they need a gradient. Otherwise, they're not gonna be able to thermoregulate. If they're not warm enough, they're not gonna be able to digest their food properly. I imagine back in the day, a lot of these snakes were being fed things that you'd find in your garden, your yard, your garage, whatever, rodents and things like that. So yeah, great option. I get it. Why you don't see them as much now is kind of beyond me. I think they're actually picking up steam because of channels like Dave Kaufman, Snake Discovery, things like that. I think that they're picking up in popularity again. But when I got into reptiles 13, 15 years ago, whatever, I didn't even know what a bull snake was. You never saw them anywhere. No one talked about them. They weren't in the magazines. So now they're kind of having a resurgence and I understand why. Number one and the craziest one, something we've never talked about, armadillo lizards. So our girdled lizard, there's a bunch of names. Generally, these are the ones that are smaller, the ones that bite their tail and kind of put armadillo themselves basically is what they're doing to protect themselves. And these animals, I lost it. I couldn't believe how hilarious this one story I read about someone going into a reptile shop and oh, I'm, you know, boas are five bucks and you know, green snakes are five bucks and they wanted 45 bucks for this armadillo lizard. If you don't know, these animals are well over a thousand dollars now. And in this article, this guy was like, I'm not paying that type of money. And now you can't find them. And even if you can, they're over a thousand dollars. Now they give birth to one baby. It's a, they're live bearers. So it makes sense. I don't think they're brought in as much. They're from uh, South Africa, that area of the world. So I think the captive breeding, which is what you want, that's 
why? Same thing with monkey tail skinks, right? One baby every couple of years, every year if you're lucky. So it makes sense why, you know, there's high demand and there's not as much supply as there is demand. So it makes sense. Now these aren't the easiest animals to take care of. By no means are they ridiculous, but they need a higher basking spot, stuff like that, right? This is not a care guide by any means, but I think that was the coolest one. I saw it over and over in these stories and articles and things like that, even in a magazine article from 1989, I think, or 88. So one of the cooler animals, something that I'll probably never keep. I just don't have the interest or really the money to do that. I just bought a bunch of monkey tail skinks. Can't wait to do that video. Should we do a video with the monkey tail skinks? Are we ready for that? Hit like and subscribe, that way you don't miss it. Okay. Oh, and for context, the $45 price tag in 1985 or whatever year it was is $107 now. We pay more for basically everything. That's, I don't know, that story will stick with me. It's so funny. So there you go. What do you think? What did you see in the 80s? What did I miss? What do you think was on the list that shouldn't have been? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You guys get extra content, videos early. You know about the cool project that I picked up earlier today. It's gonna be sick. I can't wait to show you the, the process and the build and when it's finished and what's gonna go in it. And for as little as a dollar a month, you get all that and more. And because we do videos twice a week, that's it. See you in the next one.